name is Leah Albright Bird. I was born on October 30th, 1983 into a family and consequently a childhood marked by drug addiction and abuse. At the age of 14, my whole life changed when I ran away from home. This was not the first time I had run away, but it would be the last. During that time, I ran away to live with a man who I believed loved me, but who later on manipulated me into a life of sexual exploitation. This is my story. You know, I ran away from home and I was trying to do anything that I could to stay away from going home and I started to meet people that were involved in criminal activity here in Sacramento. And so then they would say, say certain things to me. And you know, next thing I knew, I was on Stockton Boulevard or in Vegas or wherever we ended up going. He was somebody that I thought that I loved and wanted to be with. He was um, 19 when I met him. And I didn't know the kind of stuff that he was involved with. I had no idea. I was totally naive. Even though I had come from a really broken family, I wasn't around pimps and drug dealers. One of the, one of the things that happens with the, a lot of young women um, is we're all kind of just looking for love. And so the person that I met was not what you would call a pimp at that time. He was a drug dealer, which happens with a lot of guys that end up becoming pimps. They start off as drug dealers. They find out that um, it's less risky to sell a human being than it is to stand out somewhere and sell. I've had quite a few different experiences because I was out there for four, because I was on the streets for four years. And when I say on the streets, I don't mean necessarily on the streets, you know, um, in the life, the game, that's what they call it. And I was either on the street and living in hotel rooms or, you know, eventually we got apartments and we lived in apartments um, with the guys that we were with. Um, depending on who you were with, because I had three, four, four pimps during that four years. And you, you have what you call boyfriend pimps, where they're just your, it's just you and them. Um, and then you have other guys that have, you know, several girls that you, and you call them your wife-in-laws. And it's just like a really sick um, version of a family, you know, where the, the pimp is the, daddy slash boyfriend slash big brother and the girls all fight for his attention and try to outdo each other try to make more money than the other one so that you can prove that you're more valuable than the other one. I spent a lot of time in hotel rooms um, eating once a day not because there wasn't food available but because I was busy or high a good majority of the time so I started off on the streets and then you know um, because of the the growth in technology, you know, we started using the internet and escort services, which is just a pretty way of, you know, describing a service where you can call and order a girl. Um, so yeah, getting, staying, sleeping in, eating once a day, waiting for my pager to go off. At the time we had pagers <laughs> instead of cell phones. Um, and, you know, making in the upwards of a thousand dollars a day you know, trying to get as many clients as you could. I used to dread sharing it. Um, and I still have times where I wonder what people think, but I'm really proud of myself now, you know? And I have fought really, really hard to get to where I am, you know? And for me, it's a badge of honor. And anybody that can't accept who I am and who I've become as a result of it, it's their loss. On March 3rd, 2006, one of my close friends and the very girl I introduced into the life of sex trafficking had her life taken by John on the day of her 22nd birthday. After that day, my life would never be the same. This is for you, Bridget. Um, Bridget was a uh, she's actually my cousin's girlfriend when I was, I want to say I was 15 or 16, probably 16. And um, my cousin met her, I think they went to school together. She was a foster kid. And my cousin knew that I was involved in sex trafficking. <clears throat> and so he, he talked to her about it and they come up with this idea that she's going to get involved in the same thing. And uh, 
I was pretty, I've always had leadership qualities. I just didn't know what to use them for back then. I was using it for the wrong things. And uh, I remember driving down the freeway with Bridget when I was 16, the night, actually the night that I met her. And I said, um, no, are you sure you want to do this? Because once you do this, your life will never be the same. And I didn't know that, that uh, I didn't know just how true that was. You know, she ended up, she became a sex trafficking victim at 14. Um, she didn't get out until she was 19. And then she went back. Um, she kept going back. And um, in 2006, March 3rd, 2006, she was murdered by a guy in Las Vegas. So that changed my life, changed my life forever. You know, and that was really what fueled my passion to go, go back to what I came out of and help other girls like her and like me get out. Bridget's death was my turning point. Before she died, Bridget encouraged me to enroll at Sacramento City College, and it was there that I met Deanna Hearn. I didn't know just how much my life would change after meeting Deanna Hearn, but without her, I can honestly say that I wouldn't be where I am today. Deanna Cooper Hearn. I met her at Sac City and it was it was interesting because I had five classes and of those five classes she was in four of them. And it was kind of like I go in every class and it's like this girl and I have identical class schedules, you know, and Sac City has a huge uh, it's a huge campus, and there's like 15,000 students at the time. This was 2002. And uh, she's a quirky girl with glasses, and she had a skirt skirt to the floor, and just nothing like what I was accustomed to. And she made me feel comfortable, like I could open up and talk to her. And so that's how we met, Sac City. She, she believed in me. She believed in me. Um, she, uh, she saw, she saw things in me that I didn't see in myself, you know, and, um, she was my cheerleader, you know, and she still is, and, uh, It's funny because we went to high school together and we never knew each other. It was like when, t when the time was right, we finally we met, you know, and uh, her and her family let me stay with them for the first three weeks of, you know, my exit from, from that life. And they showed me that it was possible for a family to live together in harmony and love each other. And they loved me, you know. I saw myself as this big and Deanna saw me as this big, you know, and and it was because of the, you know, the fact that she believed in me that I am where I am today. I'm forever grateful. As my spiritual mother, Deanna's love and guidance helped me get on the right track. After graduating from Sacramento City Community College, I went on to further my education at William Jessup University and graduated in 2009 with a bachelor's degree in theology and counseling psychology. My motivation to spread awareness about the atrocities surrounding sex trafficking is fueled by my own experience, having been in the life for four years. Bridget's dream was established as a faith-based grassroots organization to spread the message of redemption, grace, and love for victims of sex trafficking. While our mission is clear, there is still more work to be done within Sacramento. We've had the opportunity to partner with California Against Slavery, which is a statewide valid initiative to get the penalties um, for sex traffickers and people who purchase sex from little um, higher penalties, high, higher jail pen penalties, higher fines. Um, so that's been an amazing opportunity. We had an organization called Strive to Free and it's, it's an organization that was started by some attorneys here in Sacramento that are interested in fighting human trafficking. And they 
um, put together a, ga a, a gala and they've raised the funding that we needed in order to um, start our transitional house because we're, we're opening a transitional home um, and we're aiming to do that by September. So we've slowly but surely we've been getting some great support from the community. You know, when, it, when you said one sentence, I, th I thought about our mission, a portion of our mission statement, and it's um, you know, waging war against the injustice of sex trafficking. You know, and that's, that's what we do. We've got a, a war strategy to battle this issue, and we're not just going to take one approach. We're going to take multiple approaches and do whatever we can so that, um, like our slogan says, one died so a million can live. You know, and Bridget, Bridget's life won't be in vain and other girls will end up experiencing the same thing.